All right, Shalom. This is the brother, Yuanathan, Abad Adawam, coming at you with another lesson through the spirit of power of God by Shemal Shai. All right, Lord, when I pray that it's edifying, first and foremost, as always, I want to start by giving all praises and glorifications to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone Well. Peace, love, and salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of the earth, preaching his word in truth and sincerity. All right. As you uh, brothers and sisters know, it's uh, Simp Day, all right, what I call uh, Valentine's Day. I call Valentine's Day Simp Day because you got a lot of simps worship, worshiping their women right about now, all right? And I just want to do a lesson on this demonic, uh, wicked, satanic holiday real quick through the spirit and power you have by Shemel Shah, all right? And, and um, believe it or not, it's the Sabbath, man, which these niggas, they don't know nothing about the Sabbath, but they'll keep Esau's um, demonic, you know, um, hella days, man. Which I don't like to really call them holiday, which holly comes from the um, word holy. All right. That's just Esau's way of saying um, holy day on the left hand side, holiday. Call them holidays. All right. But nevertheless, you know, uh, you know, Jake going off right now as we speak. Because here it is, the Sabbath comes in. You got these niggas most likely uh, popping. They women on the uh, Sabbath, man, which that's a major, um, that's a major, uh, sin, man, you know, having sex on the Sabbath. When we know the scriptures, which I'm going to get it, let me get it right now. you the spirit of power, y'all, by Shemel Shah. We know what the Bible says about that. Okay. And you got camps actually teaching that it's okay to name a couple, IUIC and Sakari, man. All right. I know it's in um, Isaiah, but I'm going to make sure when it says cease from doing our pleasure because you got a lot of Jake. Yeah, here it is. Yep. Isaiah 58 and three. OK, you got a lot of uh, Jake popping a woman right about now, man. This is savage. The savage just came in not too long ago. OK, this is Isaiah 58 and 13. It says, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath. From doing thy pleasure, see, which sex is the epitome of pleasure, man. Okay. It says on my holy day, right, which, you know, like I was uh, mentioning, Esau likes to call his uh, satanic days holidays. But he gets it from this word, holy day. All right. Which Sabbath is a holy day, man. All right. Of Yahweh Bashmel Shah. It says, it reads on, and call the Sabbath a delight. The holy of Yahweh, Baal Shemel Shah, honorable, and shall honor him, which you're supposed to cut off all pleasures, and you're supposed to honor the Lord. Okay, your mind's supposed to be fixated on Yahweh Baal Shemel Shah if you're an Israelite, so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Right? It says, not doing thine own way. See that? Like, you want to celebrate this, this bullshit ass, wicked, satanic holiday. Valentine's Day, aka Simp Day, all right, which you niggas, like I said, you worshiping your goddamn woman, right? It says, not doing thy own ways nor finding thine own pleasure, because niggas like to do what they want to do. They don't give a damn about the Lord. They don't give a damn about Yahweh, about Shemel Shah, right? It says, nor speaking thine own words, right? Because they, they think this, uh, celebrating this holiday is right because it feels good. It feels good to him, man. Okay. So, hey, you're supposed to refrain. The point is, you're supposed to refrain from your pleasure, man. Okay. You're supposed to refrain from doing thy, thy pleasure, which sex is a major. That, that's that's the epitome. You've got pleasure. mail. Like I said, you got guys that call themselves Israelites saying it's okay to have sex on the Sabbath, man. All right. Wicked niggas will flock. All right. To guys like that. Even though if they don't get in the truth, they'll still flock the guys because that's going. That's still of the world, man, because these Israelite groups, these other Israelite groups are of the world. OK, and they ain't right, man. And the Lord going to deal with them. But I'm going to get into the origins. All right. Of this, this um, which brothers pretty much, you know, pretty much familiar with. But, you know, just for edification sake, for newer brothers. That might have come in and just go through the origins of this, this wicked ass holiday. It says the dark origins of Valentine's Day. All right. It reads Valentine's Day is a time to celebrate romance, love and kissy face filthy. 
All right, all that bullshit. It says, but the origins of this festival of candy and cupids are actually dark, bloody, and a big bit molded. All right, because it got uh, satanic origins about it, man, behind it. Okay, it says, though no one has pinpointed the exact origin of the holiday, one place to start is ancient Rome, right? Because a lot of heathenistic things were going back in um, ancient Rome, man. All right, uh, back in ancient Rome, they had all kind of deities, like um, ancient Egypt had all kind of gods and de de deities, so to speak. Ancient um, Rome, they had a lot of uh, like uh, a lot of so-called gods, like Zeus, um, it's the name of uh, po uh, Poseidon and uh, Hades. Uh, I think that's his name, Hades, the god of the underworld. Just to name a few, so on and so forth, man. All right, uh, representing polytheism, which means um, worship of many gods. Okay, so um, I'm gonna read on. It says from February 13th to the 15th, the Romans celebrated the feast of Lupercalia. Okay, so this is going to the origins of Valentine's Day. Okay, it comes from the the feast of Lupercalia. All right. It says the man sacrificed a goat and a dog. <laughs> All right. It says then whipped women. Yep. With the hinds of animals, they just have uh, just slain. Right. They used to uh, um, whip women with the hinds of the, a dog and a goat on women's behinds, man. All right. Just just total madness that was going on back then. It says the Romans romances were drunk. They were naked, all right. Which um, the word "gem" means nakedness. They used to have uh, events, or, or um, the word "gem." Like I said, the word "gem" comes from nakedness, and they used to have uh, uh, events in coliseums, and um, I believe gems where they uh, would be half naked, man. Okay. Because, you know, Rome, this this um, society, they have that same spirit, okay? Like, um, for instance, wrestling, that's the bread and circuses where you be half naked. And it's it's nothing, but it's, it's the same thing, man. Going back to ancient Rome, all them, them uh, uh, bread and circus customs, man, okay? It says, they were naked. Noel Lemsky, now a religious studies professor at Yale University, told uh, NPR in 2011, Young women would line up for the men to hit them, uh, Linsky said. They believed this was would make them fertile. All right, so it goes back to fertility, man, the god of fertility, man. Okay, just like um, um, similar somewhat to Easter, we had Semiramis's, the god of fertility. Okay, and um, I believe, if not mistaken, they used to have sex orgies too, man. Okay, all kind of wicked. Uh, uh, demonic satanic shit was going on all right leading up to um what you have today um valentine's day man so this is what you niggas are celebrating man okay but as we know niggas don't do no research so they they don't they wouldn't know this man it says the br the brutal feat included a matchmaking lottery in which young men drew the names of women from a jar it's some more madness the couple would then be um coupled up with the duration of the festival or longer if the match was right it says the ancients the ancient romans may also be responsible for the name of our modern day of love emperor claudius ii executed two men both named valentine we get the word the a this holiday from valentine's day on february 14th and hence you have so-called valentine's day on february 14th man Okay, so that was basically a sacrifice right there, <laughs> you know. It says, um, I'm going to read this part again. It says, on February 14th of different years in the third century, their martyrdom was honored by the Catholic Church with the celebration of St. Valentine's Day. So it was a so-called martyr, man. Okay. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit more. And I'm going to get uh, some more scriptures. I'm going to wrap up. It says, later, Pope uh, Gil Gilesius, uh, uh the first 
molded things in the fifth century by combining St. Valentine's Day with Lupercalia to expel the pagan rituals. So this was combined, man. Okay. It says, but the festival was more of a theoretical interpretation of what it had once been. Linsky added, it was a little more of a drunken um, revel. Okay, a lot of people probably have today Valentine, you know, uh, go out to bars, take their dates out and get drunk and, you know, all this madness, your woman out all drunk, and pissy drunk and shit, you know, probably can get snatched up, you know, and this is what they were doing back then, man. Okay, it's all, uh, like I said, all kind of madness going on back then. It says, but the Christians put clothes back on, on it. They didn't stop it from being a day of fertility and love. And, and, and most likely they were having, um, orgy, sex, or you got mail out on, out on, um, out, all out on the streets. Okay. During this time, man, during this festival. Okay. It says around the same time, the Normans celebrated, uh, Galatian day, Galatian meant lover of women right it's uh because this is today this is a woman worshiping society it's all about catering to your women man okay the women is the prize that day this society teaches the woman is the prize man okay so and, and woman worship and going that too man it says that was lightly confused with saint valentine's day at some point in part because they sound alike. As the years went on, the holiday grew sweeter. Cha Chaucer and Shakespeare, um, which we know Shakespeare was a Jake. All right, Cha Chaucer most likely was too. But this is going on um, when Jake was ruling. Jake was being wicked as hell too, man. In um, the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages, so-called, man. Okay. It says Chaucer and Shakespeare uh, romanticized it in their work and it gained popularity throughout Britain and the rest of Europe. Like I was saying, Jake, Jake ruled Europe a thousand years, man. So Jake was in the, on his wickedness, man. OK, it said handmade paper cards became the tokens. That's why people go get Valentine's Day cards and shit, you know. Like back in middle school or a high, uh, no elementary school, used to um make cards and shit, man, for uh your your uh, significant other. Um, uh, it was something with cards. I forget. You know they used to uh you know hand out cards, man. I remember that in school. It says handmade paper cards became the tokens, the jor. I believe that's a French word in the Middle Ages. Okay, I'm going to read this part. I'm going to um, get a scripture. It says, eventually the tradition made its way to the new world. Right. Hey, it's talking about over here, man, in America, man. Because, you know, America follows after every ancient heathenistic custom. Okay. It says the intro. So, like, I'm going to read this part again. It says, eventually the tradition made its way to the new world. The in industrial revolution ushered in factory made cards in ninth in the 19th century and in 1913 hallmark cards of kansas city missouri began mass producing valentines right so hey valentine's day is a big business today too man okay it says february has not been the same since I mean, obviously it hasn't man all right because people hey especially our people they caught up in this madness man because jake man he's the biggest simp on the fucking planet Okay, excuse my French, but it's just true, man. You know, the so-called black man, primarily I'm talking about, you Israelite men. You Judite men, you're the biggest simps on the planet, man. Okay, and these hoes, they don't give a fuck about you niggas, man. They just use you for what they can use you for. They, they check. All right, but I'm going to get this scripture. This is Jeremiah 10, starting at 1. Okay, the point is in 2. It says, hear ye the word of the Lord, speak it. So like, hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel, which the house of Israel is you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. It says, thus saith the Lord, 
learn not the way of the heathen. OK, and Valentine's Day is of the heathen or, or pagan, which is the same thing. The words are synonymous. OK, that's going the way of the heathen. When you celebrate Valentine's Day, which Valentine's Day, I just went into it. The origins is wicked as hell, man. OK, it's about blood and sacrifices. I believe also. If I'm not mistaken, they used to um also wear um the skin of the, the animals they sacrificed, the dog and the goat. And they would then beat they ain't mentioned that though, man. I remember um brothers just go into it. Okay. Where they and then they'll beat the women on the um rear end with the hinds legs or whatever the hinds of the uh the goat or the dog. They but they'll wear that they'll wear their fur, man. After they slaughtered them. Okay. And then, like I mentioned, they have six orgies, man. Okay. It says, um, thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them. Okay. So the point being, go not the way of the heathen, man. Well, the Lord gave us high holy days. Okay, like, hey, it landed on a high holy day. It, <laughs> like I said, the Sabbath. Okay, so-called Valentine's Day landed on the Sabbath. The night right now as we speak is the Sabbath, man. The nigga, niggas celebrating this shit, taking the uh, woman out to eat. And, and after that, um, hey, they're going to do the do, man, which you know what that is. I, I went into that, which is pop day women. They have sex, man. Okay, which is wicked. You can't have sex on the Sabbath. But these niggas, they don't give a damn. They're going to pop their woman to get their fucking rocks off and, and, and call it a night, man. Okay, because niggas, niggas love the wickedness and they love to the, uh, please their flesh. Okay, and they love, you niggas love going after You've got mail. Nothing, man. That's why, I, hey, this scripture got to come to pass, man. I'm going to get in and close out. Let's get Zechariah. 13 and 8. Okay. This, this must happen, man. Because niggas ain't going to learn till, till all hell break loose, pretty much, man. All right. This is Zechariah 13 and 8. It says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, which is talking about mainly America, because this is the main target of the Lord's indignation. Okay. His destruction. Because we know, according to the Bible, America is going to be totally destroyed, man. Very soon, man. You got World War Three brewing up as we speak. And you got these niggas still in their wickedness, man. Not repenting, not turning back. Okay. Not um cutting off their wicked uh, ways. Okay. So they're going to get caught up out there, man. It says, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, save Yahweh by Shemel Shah, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. Okay. Two thirds are going to die in that lake of fire, which is by those missiles or those nuclear warheads. When they touch down on this place, man, it's going to make America a vast desert. It's going to first and foremost, it's going to make it a lake of fire. This place is going to look like a sea of fire when it's all said and done. And now the smoke clears and the fire clears. Okay. It's going to be a total wasteland, man. And these niggas going to get wasted with it. OK, because they want to get wasted all right, on some alcohol tonight, polluting the Lord's Sabbath and fucking they women, man. I'm just saying like you've that. got mail. So the Lord, the Lord going to waste their ass in nuclear destruction. OK, so, hey, I'm going to end it off on that. <clears throat> just want to make it quick. Just want to go on this wicked ass satanic holiday. All right. Lord willing, this was edifying. I'm going to sign off by saying all uh, again, all praises and glorifications goes to Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakakadash. Double honesty apostles and elders at Great Millstone who well. Peace, love, and salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of the earth preaching his word and truth and in sincerity. I say shalom, call me I shallow and a Baba Ball. Shalom.